What do you need to know before you get a pet fish? Well, in today's video, that's what we're going to be talking about. Welcome back to the channel, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Let's get to the video. The first thing you're going to want to know about the fish is how big it's going to get. There's a wide variety of sizes, from 46 millimeters, which is the world's smallest fish, to 60 feet, which is the world's largest fish, which is the whale shark. Most common people won't be getting these type of fish. They're going to be getting fish in between these. The size of the fish is very important to know so that you can pick out the right size tank for the fish. So don't try to squeeze a four foot fish into a four foot tank because that's just not going to work out in the long run. Cool. Things like Antheus are four inches to five inches on the smaller side and they are about the same size as clownfish. Clownfish can live in a 20 to 30 gallon tank happily, but an Antheus needs at least 125 gallons. You could get away with 90 gallons, but depending on the species, but most of them need 125 gallons plus. So now that we got activity, tank size, and the size of the fish now, what's next? Well, equipment is the next thing that you wanna know about your pet fish. What equipment are you gonna need? Do you need a heater for this fish? Well, I'm gonna cover that right here. If your fish is from a cold water area, you are most likely not gonna need a heater. Well, actually, in fact, you will not need a heater. So things like goldfish and white cloud minnows will not need a heater. But if you have tropical fish like tiger oscars, tetras, green chromises, and clownfish, you will definitely need a heater to keep the tank nice and warm. Unless you live in a warmer region, then you are most definitely gonna need a heater to keep these fish happy. Now that we talked about heaters, let's talk about ways to cool off your tank. Chillers and fans are the most effective way to cool off your tank in hotter regions or places that have hotter summers. But if you don't have the budget for a chiller or a fan, you can always use a bag of ice in emergencies. Just know that you will have to replace the ice very frequently because it's going to be melting fast depending on how hot your tank is. Now that heating and cooling is out the way, let's talk about filtration. Filtration is the backbone to your aquarium. Without it, all your fish will die and everything else will too. So if you don't want your fish and inverts to die and your plants to die and your corals to die, just make sure that you have good filtration. There are many different forms of good filtration. There's all natural all the way to the most complicated sumps. If you are a beginner fish keeper, I recommend that you use a sponge filter or a hang on the back filter. These are the most cost efficient filters and they are also great at their job. So you won't have to worry about your tank crashing just because you went for a cheaper form of filtration. Canister filters are also good for bigger aquariums. Also sumps are great for bigger aquariums and even small aquariums. But one filtration method I do not recommend is under the gravel filtration. Under the gravel filters are just outdated at this point and there are much better and cost efficient options out there. Now let's talk about the thing that makes your tank look beautiful. Well, it can also make your tank look ugly, but that's going to be lighting. Lighting can be very simple or very complicated. It depends on what you're going for. There are tons of different lighting options. Too many to name in this video. From metal halides to T5 fluorescents and LEDs, there are different prices and budgets that you can choose from, different light looks that you want, and different things that you can have your light to do. You can spend anywhere from $10 to $100 for a fish only and planted tank lighting system, all the way up to a couple thousand for a reef tank lighting system. So it really all depends on what you want. You can also splash out on planted systems by spending a couple thousand on lighting too. I do not judge. But for beginners, I recommend you get a cheaper light. Anywhere from $20 to $40 would be good. The reason you don't want to spend too much on lighting on your first tank or your second tank is because you're most likely going to fail on these tanks. And if you spend all your money on these tanks, it's most likely going to discourage you if you fail. So your first tank or two should be budget builds so that you could get a feel for the hobby. And then after that, you could go all out. Now, with that out of the way, that brings us to substrate. Most of the time, substrate is just for looks. But in some cases, it could be very important for the health of your fish. Things like corridors and loaches need to have a fine sand substrate so that their barbs don't get messed up. 
So just make sure that you research what your fish needs and prefers before you put yourself first. Remember, you are setting up this tank to make your fish happy first and you second. But if your fish don't care about the substrate, you could basically have anything as your substrate. Anything with reason like sand, gravel, or dirt, if that's your type of thing. Good luck with that. The next thing you want to know about fish before you get them is what type of water conditions are they happy in? Do they like high pH, low pH, or what are the things that they like in their water? Knowing where the fish is from can really help with this, so I also recommend you research that. You also want to make sure that if the fish is a saltwater fish, it goes in a saltwater tank, a brackish water fish goes into a brackish water tank, and a freshwater fish goes into a freshwater tank. This is common sense, but not to everyone. The next thing is how long does the fish live? This is important because you have to remember a pet is a commitment and you don't want to have a fish for 20 years if you don't want to take care of the fish for 20 years. If you don't plan on keeping the fish its entire life, have a plan to rehome the fish when you are ready to replace it or whatever you are planning to do. Don't flush the fish and don't kill the fish. That is not right because the fish did not choose you to be its owner. The next thing that you want to know is what type of diseases are the fish susceptible to. This could be anything from ick and internal parasites to marine velvet. Yeah. So you just want to make sure that you are five steps ahead and you know what diseases the fish can get so that you can cure it as soon as you see it. Having the medications may cost a lot up front, but in the long run, I promise you it's going to save you a lot of money because it's going to save a lot of fish's lives and it's going to outweigh the cost that it did to set up depending on how expensive the fish are. But don't put a price on your fish because, yeah. The next thing you want to figure out is the diet of the fish. What does this fish eat and how often does it eat? Most predator fish can eat once a week and they only need to have protein in their diet. You can throw in a few vegetables here and there to just add the vitamins they need, but they will mostly eat other fish. Never feed fish land animals because that's not what they eat in the wild. Herbivore fish, I think, are the easiest to feed because they can feed off of algae in the tank. Well, most of them can. They also eat vegetables and it is just so easy to let them graze on the algae in the tank and feed them whenever the algae is getting low. Omnivore fish are a mix of both herbivore and carnivore fish, so just take what I said in the last two and put it into this one. The last thing that we're going to be talking about in this video is how to cycle your aquarium. There are many different ways to cycle your aquarium. The first one that I'm going to be talking about right now is going to be putting food into the aquarium. This way of cycling your tank works by giving food to the bacteria for it to start growing and then the water becomes safe for the fish. Then there's also a fish cycle, which I do not recommend because it burns the fish's gills, but it works the same way as the last cycle I just talked about. There's also bacteria kickstarts that you can put into the aquarium to speed up the cycling process. And some of them even cycle your tank in one day. The last thing that you'll want to do before you pay fish into your aquarium is to make sure that it's cycled by testing the water with test strips or a test kit or taking it to your local fish store or any fish store in that matter to get it tested. With that said, that's going to be the end of the video. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. And this video is a little bit longer, so if you stay to the end, I appreciate that very much. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you all in the next video.